harsh shifts, slip, shutters, noise, whine, growl. All right, guys, GM transmissions are kind of a crapshoot, but hopefully installing a new thermostat is going to put the odds in our favor. Stick around. So this is a 2017 Yukon with the 5.3 and the 6L80E transmission, but this applies to any 2014 and up transmission with the exception of the Allisons, so the Suburbans, the Tahoes, the Yukons, the Sierras, and the Silverados. It's all related to this technical service bolt, and that's kind of the difference between this video and a lot of the other ones. Everybody else is showing you how to do an aftermarket uh, install, or they do the pill flip or pill delete. And uh, I kind of wanted to do one that was by the book. So GM actually put out technical service bolts and because they were having so many issues with these. It says that people would get uh, harsh shifts, slip, shutters, noise, whine, growl. So the issue is they put a thermostat in here that doesn't open up the transmission cooler until 200 degrees. And their fix is to install the new one, which opens it at about 155 degrees. Apparently lower better. Um, I don't know why that was news to GM because everybody else has known that forever. So... I noticed driving this up in the mountains, the transmission temps would get well over 200 degrees. And so I'm hoping that this will extend the life of my transmission. And so the good news is this is an easy fix. The part is about a hundred bucks and you can buy it now. Again, part numbers and everything is in the description. Now I do realize, I guarantee there's gonna be a bunch of comments below where people saying, well, you could just do the pill flip or you could just delete this and gut it and run it open. And uh, I will make an argument that there is a purpose to a thermostat. It is to get the transmission to its optimal temperature much quicker so if you live in a cold weather environment where it's only 30 degrees outside it's really not good to have your transmission running 30 degrees so the install is actually pretty easy so let's get under there and do it so the first thing you're going to want to do is just come in here and make sure that you don't already have it done because the dealer's supposed to do this at any time they work on the transmission now so if you look on the bottom of this i put some permit markers so i actually read the markings if it says seven zero that means it's already been done. This one has the number two. It's obviously the old one. And so mine needs to be replaced. So tools are pretty simple for this job. A 15, a 13, a 10, and maybe some uh, just the versions of uh, sockets or wrenches. Here's the part number I'm using. This is the superseded part number. I'll put all these in the description, but either way, uh, like I said, I'm going to open this. This one's special because it's made in Canada of VEC pieces and port tape. So if you look on the bottom of this, there's actually a seven zero in it and that's how you know it's done so if yours has 70 on it you're good if there are two different versions of how it bolts here one of them has little screw things and actually if you get one of those you can actually just take the guts out of this and put them in there luckily most of them have just the o-rings and we'll show you those in the car and so anyway let's go and get this in there so again the valve is here on the driver's side of the transmission uh there's a 13 millimeter that holds it in and then a 10 millimeter that holds in the lines now the lines won't move unless we remove this 15 millimeter first so i'll show you how to do all that so just a 15 millimeter on an extension. Now the lines can move around. Now I do like to make sure it's clean. So just a little bit of cleaner, a little bit of compressed. We don't want any contaminant. So now I'm just using a 10 millimeter on extension. With these uh, loose, they actually move around a little bit. Surprisingly easy to break free. Do it with finger. Now you will get a little bit of fluid loss, uh, so just have some rags ready. It's really not enough that you even need to replace anything. Remember, this is all aluminum, so everything you're doing, you don't want to break any bolts. 13 millimeter. Rag ready. Go ahead and remove the brace. Now the line should be able to just slide out. Of course, my camera is literally below where the fluid's coming out. Now we can just pop the block off. Comes off pretty easily. Now it's very important to note that there are two o-rings here on each one and a seal here if one of the o-rings isn't there it means it got stuck inside one of these holes and you need to pop it out of these holes and put it back onto the line so now we can take our new canadian piece put it back up here so now again verify that we have the o-rings in place we're going to do the bottom one first just gently push it in. After you get the bottom one in place, you can slide the retainer back into place. You can't put it in afterwards. And then gently push the front one into place. Now we'll thread our 10 millimeter. Now it does kind of seem like this piece is asymmetrical. So if it doesn't go in, uh, you probably put it on backwards because I couldn't get the bolt on the first time I did it. So now we can go ahead and tighten that back with the 10 millimeter. Again, remember you are tightening aluminum 
So this is not like full strength. This is just kind of nice and snug. Remember how easy it was to get off. I'm kind of just doing a one finger snug, a little bit of a pressure with the thumb. That should be more than plenty. Then actually for final tightening, I'm just going to use a wrench so I don't over tighten it. So this is a 13 millimeter wrench and uh, this is just snug. Again, we're not cranking anything down. Back over here, we're going to put our 15 millimeter bolt for the bracket back in place. Now this one is into the block, so it can be kind of more snug. So that is it. That took me, what, 20 minutes to do, even with filming, even for the average person with a car on the ground, it shouldn't take you between 15 and 30 minutes tops. Uh, I measured how much fluid came out. It was the equivalent of maybe two or three ketchup packets, which in the 13 quart system is not gonna make even a dent. So our transmission should run much cooler now. Hopefully the life of the transmission will be extended. There is one more thing that I recommend and I'll show you when we get back on the ground what it is. All right, back safe on the ground. So the other part I am talking about is just a uh, active fuel management disabler. So I have this one, um, GT Motor. Range makes some that are more expensive, but uh, all of them have good reviews. So I'll put a link to this. And basically all this does is just keeps it out of four cylinder mode, keeps it in V8 mode all the time. So devices like that are really big on like the forums and stuff and the Facebook groups related to these and on the Jeeps and a lot of the other cars. And basically the, the premise is by keeping it out of four cylinder mode, it keeps that lugging or shuttering that the four cylinder mode causes, which destroys the torque converter. And the torque converter is generally what kills these things. So a mix of heat and that shutter is generally the theory. Now that that's not my theory. That's just what everybody on the forum thinks. Uh, but I do think it just drives a lot better staying in V8 mode all the time. And I really haven't noticed any decline in the miles per gallon. And those don't reprogram anything. All they do is they tell the emission system not ready yet. So basically the car has to get up to temp before it even lets it do the V4 mode. Uh, so this basically, even though it's up to temp, it just tells it it's not ready. So it just stays in the factory V8 mode the whole time. So uh, I guess that makes me feel a little bit better about it. You do have to pull them out if you have emissions testing because it does say the system uh, is not ready. But either way, I'm happy with it. And I do think that's another thing that will extend the life of the transmissions in these. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that thumbs up and like button. Keep these videos going out to more people. So here we are coming back for about an hour trip with a trailer. It hasn't really even broke that quarter mark, which is 150 degrees. And so very happy with this transmission thing. It's going to keep this hopefully nice and cool.